Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 22. And the hand of the Lord was upon me. Remember, we left Ezekiel with going back to verse 14. We left him in bitterness and heat of my spirit. He's been called to go to, to his people who are not going to listen. And then we get into the great text of the watchman. If you don't tell them, what's the implication? Is Ezekiel like, I don't want to go? I'm not going to say, because I don't know. But, let's make matters worse, if we can. The Lord was there upon me. Now Ezekiel's writing. And he said unto me, Arise and go forth unto the plain. Now, we left him at um, verse 15, Tell Abib by the river Shebar. And this was like a stopover on the way to Babylon. Now God tells him, go over to the plain. And I will talk with thee. Then I rose and went forth into the plain. And behold, the glory of the Lord stood there. Je uh, Ezekiel has seen God in his glory. I think it's the love that Ezekiel has for his people and their reaction like Jeremiah. It brings Jeremiah, we call him the weeping prophet. Paul puts his life on the line for the Jews. He is told two or three times, don't you dare go to Jerusalem. If you go to Jerusalem, you're going to be... We're going to look at one of them aspects. Paul says, I love my countrymen. I'll go for death. Jesus Christ went to the cross. And again, we're, we're going to get rid of the Joel Olstein happy ministry. The Walmart yellow happy sticker face. I've seen that yellow happy sticker face where they, you know, where Walmart will give you the injections where all the shots they give you. That's the last place where somebody wants to be happy. As the glory which I saw by the river Chebar, that's chapter 1, and I fell on my face. The glory of God will have you to go hit the ground. I had one man who said he was saved. I'm not calling the question, but a few little bit of activity. But he goes, when I go to heaven, I'm going to walk up and say, my man Jesus, and give him a high five. No, you're not. I believe when when you die and you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. I believe you are looking at a pair of feet when you see Jesus. You're not going to get up to he tells you to get up. Then the Spirit, that would be the Holy Spirit, entered into me. And set me upon my feet. And spank with me. Look who's doing the speaking. The Holy Spirit's doing the speaking. The Spirit entered me, set me on my feet, and spank with me. That's the Holy Spirit. God the Father speaks, Jesus Christ speaks, and the Holy Spirit speaks. And said unto me, Go. That's a great bird known by God. I wonder what the modern Bibles do with it. I don't know what they do. I, I just throw that in there because... I, I hear the modern Bible being read, and I only got to laugh. That made it simple. You, you threw the whole context out. Shut thyself within thy house. Go to your house, go home, close the door. But thou, son of man, favorite term of Ezekiel, 
I've seen it of Daniel and the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold, they shall put bands upon thee, handcuffs, chains, leg irons, and shall bind thee with them. You're going to be tied up. It's a house of rest. Ezekiel has not really begun his ministry already. And they shall not go out, and thou shall not go out among them. And we would call it a house arrest. Now, interesting, Jeremiah. We're taking our time with Ezekiel, taking our time with Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29. Because they are interesting books to study in the ministry. Jeremiah 29, 26. And the Lord had made the priest instead of Jehoiada the priest. And he should be officers in the house of the Lord. Every man is mad. Make himself a prophet. Thou shalt be put him in prison in the stocks. Now therefore, why hast thou reproved Jeremiah? Jeremiah was put in prison and locked up. Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew, Jewish book. I run to it when we want to talk about the Jews. And I gotta look at my handwriting here. Not 19. 14. Matthew 14, verse 3. My handwriting. For Herod had laid hold on John the Baptist and bound him and put him in prison. Chapter 27, Matthew. Chapter 27. This is nothing new with Ezekiel. Chapter 27, verse 6. Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 1. Jesus. Pilate, verse 2. Judas, verse 3. Verse 6. No, uh, no verse 27, 2. Excuse me. And when they bound him, Jesus, verse 1. Joseph was bound. Acts 12. I don't know where they get off with this nice, friendly kind of ministries and happy-go-luckies unless they haven't read their Bible. Acts 12, 6. And when Herod would have put him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door that kept the prison. I would kind of wonder if, if the, the apostles and Jesus would come back into these churches that have these happy go lucky kind of ministries. Everything's hunky dory, just love. Acts twenty one. Paul said, all they, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Acts 21, 11 through 33. Uh, terrible handwriting. 23 Paul oh, is bound up somewhere here
Actually, that's a, they actually said, let me look it up. It's not 33. Okay, yeah, 30, 21 33. Didn't see the bell. And the chief captain came there, took him, Paul, and commanded him to be bound between two chains. Jail. We know Paul spent his whole life between chains. Revelation. Revelation. Chapter 1. I'm going to read into this one, but Scripture would tell you. Revelation 1, my writing, 9. Now it doesn't say it, but I'm going to read into it. And I, John, who also your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom of the paces of Jesus Christ was in the island that's called Patmos. Tribulation. John was put in jail for the word of God, and I can only imagine that they bound him at times. How do you get back to Ezekiel? How do you get an easy living in a ministry? God, Jesus Christ, didn't have an easy living. Now, I've never been bound. I've been threatened to be bound and put in cuffs. But I know street preachers in America who have. I know worldwide, 2021, they've been put in jail. Verse 25, bind thee with them, the bands. Now shall not go out among you. can't even leave your house. That's God's man. That's some way he said, okay, God, I'll do what you tell me to do. And what is, what is the result? Okay, God, I'll do what you tell me to do. I'll do it to the best ability I can. I, you know, I'm still a sinner. Okay. And what's the world say? Lock them up. Put them in jail. Call the cops. Get rid of them. Close them down. And everybody, well, most everybody think, well, everybody's going to heaven. Somebody does not read their Bible when they believe the wonderful great ministry. And they cover it up by, you know, the, the chicken fellowship, the barbecue, and, you know, we're going to have the bingo, we're going to have, you know, the trunk or tree, we're going to have the movie night, we're, we're going to have the roller skating night, we're going to have the family game night, we're, and then we don't suffer no persecution, but by love and by letting our light shine, you know, people will get saved. That's not Bible. Nowhere does it say all are welcome. I, I don't believe there will be a, a worldwide, a church-wide, American-wide revival. Because there is no suffering. I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth. What? what? Thus save the Lord, put into your heart, and open up your mouth. I'm going to cleave the roof to your mouth. You know, the cleavers separate. In the Bible, cleave me to stick together. A husband shall cleave to his wife. That doesn't mean you divorce. It means you two become one. The words today have dis dissipated. They're, they've gotten worse. I love when, when I I can have a computer program read to me back what I've written on, on Word. And I, I quote scripture in there. And Word has a hard time reading the Elizabethan English of the scriptures I quote. 
and thou shalt be dumb. That doesn't mean dull. It means dumb in the Bible means you can't speak. There were people in Jesus' ministry where he met that were dumb. Let me do a little search here real quick. Dumb is not always, it's not, and it, dumb is not stupid in the Bible. And dumb appears in 27 verses of the Bible. Both the Old and the New Testament. 14 verses in the Old verses in the Old Testament and 13 in the New Testament. And most of them are in the Gospels. And just look, looking real quick. And between the the Old Testament, there's a tie between Psalms, Isaiah, and Ezekiel. Don't can't speak. You can't speak. So God is going to silence Ezekiel and shall not be to them a reprover. For they are in a rebellious house. So you're going to be under house arrest. You're going to be in handcuffs. Your, your, your legs are going to be in iron, and I am going to make you dumb. That drive me nuts. But when I speak with thee, God speaking, when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord. So Ezekiel, what the count is, the only time you're going to open up your mouth, Ezekiel, it'll be a while, because it'll be later on when we get in Ezekiel, God's going to say, okay, you can speak. But the only time you're going to speak now is when I tell you to speak. Your words will not be your words no longer. They will be my words. And I will prevent the speaking of your mind and your heart and your own. I'm going to prevent you by giving you the dumb spirit. And when I do want you to talk, when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth and thou shalt say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God. I wish that would happen with many preachers today. That the only time they would open their mouth is thus saith the Lord. But too many preachers open up their mouth with their own worldliness, their own devilishness, their own carnal ways, and they very rarely open their mouth to thus saith the Lord. Some of them will even say, well, God led me to this message. God made me, God would have me to, God spoke to me. I like when they say, God led me to have this message today. And it's like, hey buddy, you preached that same message last year. All you did was just take the dust off. I wish God would have given us the Pinocchio nose. Thus saith the Lord God, he that heareth, let him hear. That's with the ministry. Speak what God tells you to speak. And he, he listen, there will be people that will hear you. There will be people that listen. They're all not going to be against you. With the ministry that I've had, and I've been in the active street ministry since 2005, I wonder, and I don't mean them going on the street and preaching, but I wonder how the ministry we've had, where it encouraged somebody for God to say, okay, I want you to do this. And they are going about in their public ministry, not always street preaching. That's not the only public ministry. Because they heard. They listened. And they're obeying God to what God wants them to do. 
and he that forbeareth, let him forbear. There are going to be people who will not listen. I had a preacher tell me one time, he offered me this ministry. This is this is where I turned it down. Well, see, when you get up and preach, there are going to be people going to get up at, at your altar they're gonna they're going to kneel down, they're going to pray, and you'll start seeing the people in their seats, and they'll start praying as you work your way to the back row. Everybody? Everybody. Well, show me that in the Bible. Well, it was added under the church a thousand, there was added under church two thousand. And how many people didn't were added to the church? How many people walked away not saved? I guarantee what the Bible says, I guarantee a lot more walked away. Walked away. They weren't added to the church. See, they, they will quote to, you know, I don't know, I forget, 4,000 was added to the And they would you know, everybody was the 4,000. They would have you, it doesn't say that. But then again, you've got the mighty power of the Holy Spirit that's not in the churches today. Read the lives of seeing church age. But there will be people that will hear, there will be people that forbear, for they are a rebellious house. And that closes off the three chapters. And we've come a long way from these these. Heavenly beings, the cherubims, with wheels and God. And you're going against a people that are your people. They're not going to listen. Now you sit in your house, a house arrest, and you can't speak unless I open your mouth. So if anybody ever sitting in, here you go, here you go, you see. You have a hard time memorizing scripture. And well, somebody comes to you, well, you know, the ministry is supposed to be great. We, I had a police officer one time, where is your mass group of people? Well, here's the memory verse for all these people. And be kind and respectful. Okay? Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter what? No, Jeremiah. He had only two or three converts. He had Baruch, Ethiopian eunuch, and Daniel. And Daniel came many, many, many years afterwards. Ezekiel. As soon as Ezekiel steps on the scene, he's put into house arrest. Jesus. Now, would you believe Jesus was God? Well, okay. Do you believe he was a good guy? Well, yeah, he was excellent. You know, did he do you believe he he gave people hell? He gave them the ability to hear. He gave them the ability to speak. He took away their diseases. He, 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 some, you know, they were made to see. You, you believe that's a wonderful, good thing. And, you know, got rid of the devil possession. You know, yeah, that's a great thing. You really believe that? Yeah. And he spoke the word. Of, yeah. And what did they give him? What? They gave him the cross. And at the cross, there was only the women in the ministry and John. That was it. There were more men that showed up to bury Jesus than he crucified. All right. Peter. You know, they say he's the first pope. Well, he's not the first pope. You know, he was arrested at least three or four times in the book of Acts. Apostle Paul spent his whole life in perils, and perils of the countrymen, and perils of the heathen, and perils among the Christians. And Paul said, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Revelation is a good book. Oh, it's a great book. I love Revelation. Our church is doing Revelation. All right, good. And why was John on the island of Patmos? For the word of God. So, 
When you're supposed to have results, and you're, our church has got all these people saved, and our church has the altars full, and the... Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Jesus, Peter, Paul, John, James was killed in... Uh, all the apostles, here, here's the one, and all the apostles died a violent death, but John, the apostle, and all for the word of God. How is it your church is doing great and happy, wonderful, and everybody in the Bible is opposite to what is going on in your church? And they didn't have chicken cook-offs and all that. Jesus fed 5,000. He fed 4,000. Where were they? Where did that little boy go? He, you know, the little boy gave his bread and his fish. But where did he go? He didn't stay with Jesus. Think about that. 